Hello everyone and welcome back to Budget Bricks. I am Knox, your host, and in today's video we are going to be taking a tour of my Lego room. Before we get started with that, I'd like to give a shout out to Colin and Caleb. Thank you so much guys for watching. Hope you enjoy the videos. And also I'd like to thank, thank you guys. I've got three new subscribers since my last video. Thank you so much and I hope you guys are enjoying the content and I look forward to putting more out and seeing what you guys think of that. Now let's get to the tour. Now what I'll be doing is showing you the basic setup that I have and this is not my ideal setup. Right now we're actually in a temporary housing situation while we're hunting for a new home. So the setup I have here is not again ideally what I'd like to have but I'm making do with the space that we have to work with. So let's show you what I got. So what I wanted to show you first here is my filming station. You can see I have the tripod set up and this is where I do my haul videos as well as what will be future set reviews. You can see here that I have the 501st pack, Battle Pack here waiting for my next video that I'll be working on. Keep an eye out for that. As you can see this is budget bricks. I have for my table a foosball table with an old solid slab door. <laughs> so making use of what I have just panning over here, this is some of the rest of the basement. Basically my Lego room is in one large area and just in one corner of the finished basement. I'm going to show you an area in here. This is the utility room with sump pump boxes, utility sink, but what I really wanted to show you is this is my BrickLink supply station. As you can see down here I've got bubble mailers, boxes, bubble wrap, different bags, for storing pieces, I have up here in the left hand corner, there are boxes that have specific pieces from the BrickLink store as well as instruction manuals and things of that nature. So this is the majority of what I have for the setup for the BrickLink store. And then moving over here to the actual LEGO room, I want to show you first, I've got this bank of towers here, these bottom four large drawers are all my personal collection as far as I've got big pieces and things, some storage containers in there, but these middle eight drawers are all for my BrickLink store. So from here on down to here and over, that's all pieces that I have in my BrickLink store for sale. These upper four are for personal use. I have in here all of my translucent pieces, whether that's trans red, blue, yellow, white, clear, um, and then those are mostly in individual bags by color. The larger pieces are all just kind of separate on the bottom. In here we have a lot of miscellaneous type pieces, mostly jumper plates and grills. We've got some uh, spinner plates and hinge hinges, bricks. I've got back here a lot of different boxes, storage containers, cabinet type pieces. In here is my uh, foliage bin. I've got you know different leaves, branches, some tree trunks, all the different flower type and vine elements. And then the first set I'd like to show, here it is, the Hogwarts Castle. Probably my favorite of my collection. This thing is massive, 6,000 pieces. It is a beautiful display piece. And I'd like to do a view, review of this here in the future. And especially I'd like to show you what they have going on in back with all the different vignettes of different scenes from the movies. It was a lot of fun to build, just having some nostalgia reliving those scenes in the process of building. Over here we have my computer desk set up where I do most of my BrickLink sorting and just organizing orders and things like that. Up above we have the Slave One, this is the 2010 edition, I believe the third edition of the set. I've made a little custom display stand for it to set up there. And then over here is the Vendor Class Star Destroyer. And this is actually a uh, fan designed mock by Jorstad Designs. He actually submitted this as a Lego Ideas project. And in the process he was willing to uh, for those interested, give out the instructions, so I was able to obtain those from him, get the pieces, and put this thing together. Really uh, beautiful set. Again, it's my one of my favorite sets, or favorite ships from the Star Wars universe, so I'm very happy to have that in LEGO form. Obviously, this is not a set 
at least in a UCS style that Lego has put out. And then over here we have the Saturn V rocket. This is the 21309, which is the original version of this set. They just had a re release of this uh, back a month or so ago, but this is the original set. And next to it is actually a smaller Saturn V that LEGO released back in 2010, I believe, or no, no, 2000. And this, my brother and I actually had owned this, and it's part of a larger Saturn V mission to the moon with L Lunar Lander and Rover and things like that. This is just the one piece, and I thought it was neat having it there in comparison to the Saturn V as a uh, progression of <laughs> how far LEGO has come through the years. Now, I'd like to walk over around to the other side to show you off the rest of these sets that I have displayed here. This is another Jorstad Designs. This is the Luker Hulk droid control ship in the CIS, you know, blue and light gray color scheme. This is, uh, I believe, about 3,500 pieces. And the thing just is a really an incredible build. Very complicated, not for the faint of heart by any means. Down below that, I have temporarily displayed a custom piano that I mocked uh, for my wife as a display piece for our bookshelves. Right now, as I said, we're in a transition stage, so we don't have very much shelving space, so it's mostly just being taken up by books and not decorative pieces. Eventually, that will not be in my Lego room. Over here, we have more Star Wars. I've got the ATST, the Rogue One version. And then, as I was showing in my latest haul video, this is the 2571 Luke's Landspeeder that just came out this year. Very nice, very happy to have that in the collection. Here we have the second edition of the ARC-170 Starfighter. I believe this was 2010. I have it here on a... I have it here just on a simple support structure with a angled hinge plate to give it that angled flight look. And then over here, these are some sets that are older than I am. From 1979, we have the 928 Galaxy Explorer and the 924 Space Cruiser. Classic space sets. Love just the fun building techniques. Nothing too crazy and fancy, but it was interesting to see how the uh, old Lego designers used to build the sets with the pieces they had. They had to get pretty creative, and I think they did a really good job with these type of sets especially. Down here below are all of my different colors of sorted bricks. Most of these are, as you can see, sorted out by color. And there's typically the way I like to do it with mine is to sort them by bricks, plates, slopes, and then just random specialty pieces. If I don't have enough to fill a bin, I'll just combine them. Like, as you can see here with the yellow, this is bricks and plates combined. And then you've got just slopes and specialty pieces. But in the case of, like, the red and the white, where I have a large quantity of all of them, I have enough to have a plate, um, a bin just for plates. And then I like to, with the small pieces, such as the one-by-one -one round studs, and one by one tiles and things, and even specifically bags just of tile, to have those in separate bags, that way I'm not having to dig around, and especially for the small pieces, try and digging around for those while I'm hunting for pieces. And again, we've got bricks, and different slopes and wedge plates, and then, you know, just specialty pieces, so that's kind of how I have them all divided out. And over here we have more of the same. This is a bin just of colors that I just have a small amount of that don't fill up a bin, so I just have them in their individual bags here of the different colors. Sand red, which I have two pieces. Another turquoise, don't have very much of that either. But again, most of these don't fill more than like a sandwich size bag of the different colors that I have for that. I got, you know, reddish and brown and brown, tan and dark tan. And then up here we have from 1990, actually as old as I am, the Mega Core Magnetizer from the Mtron theme. I love the Mtron. It's uh, a great theme, some great sets in there, uh, but specifically this Mega Core Magnetizer is a great set, you know, massive with those great 
black wheels, something you don't see in very many of the you know sets, even from the former Space Lines back in the 90s. Right here is another one of my mocks. This is the Hogwarts Castle bookend that I made to display, uh, again, as a bookend for my Harry Potter books. This is supposed to be displayed with our uh, on our bookshelves, but again, due to the limited space that we have at the moment, this is down here in the Lego room. I still have to order a few pieces. You can see it's supposed to be, you see the black here. I need to get that in dark bluish gray. Over here is one of the Creator 3-in-1 sets. I can't remember exactly the name of it, but it's in the airplane version. I made a custom display stand to kind of give it that upward angled flight look. Uh, I've got a little more work to do in this. You can see it's not sitting all that well. And then moving over here, we have the Skull's Eye Schooner from the, I believe, 1989. And this is my favorite of the pirate ships in the Lego line. The gray with the black and white sails, a little bit of green there for the cannon openings. It's a classic four-gunner and really quite nice. It's a fun story that I have to share at some point about how I acquired this. Below I have uh, small parts storage bins and this has most of my Technic pieces. These are all the small parts. Pins, axles, gears, and then down below some bigger bins for the bricks and plates of Technic as well as uh, lift arms and pieces and that, of such. Uh, down below is actually the first section of my Christmas village. This is the church. And we see we have a paver path along there. Uh, down there's a, just a snack booth, a goodie booth, and a house. Got an igloo back there. And this is a display piece that I'm making for Christmas time that's going to be sitting on top of our piano. It's going to be in three sections. You see I've got this section on the left which is fairly complete. I have a little bit more work to do to it, converting it to a mills plate system to interlock with this middle section, and there will be a third section here in the end. And this is the town hall, still under construction, some areas that i got to finish up, and this will be placed back here. You can see I've got a little skating rink, and the town hall will be placed behind there. Uh, more small part storage. This is mostly gray bricks and plates. And same thing, these are arches, angle, slope pieces, as well as cylinders and things like that. I do a lot of working with light gray, whether it's castle or Star Wars type things, so I like to have those pretty well sorted out. Up above, we have the Black Seas Barracuda. Unfortunately, I am missing the four mast sails. When I got this, it was just in an unsorted bulk lot of Lego, and it was everything there except for those sales which I was a little disappointed in and trying to get those aftermarket the genuine Lego brand is not cheap over here just a couple of posters we've got the Marvel Avengers as well as the old castle line poster this is a lot of fun some of the Fright Night and Black Knight sets down here is the start of a castle mock that I'd like to fully flesh out at some point. Right now I do not have the space for it. This is just the gatehouse. You can see I started here. I've got more work to do on the left turret and more to do beyond. But this would just be basically the very beginning entry point to the castle. And again down here more small part storage. This is a lot of um, snot type bricks and plates. You can see here. So most of that, and over here is a lot of your hinge type and clips and some of the old classic hinge. Got quite a few of these actually, very happy. I've slowly been adding to my collection of those. Those come in very handy in certain situations. Over here is just more kind of overflow storage. Most of these bins that I have right now in this pile are all kind of pieces that I'm using for various things with the uh, Christmas Village. Here we have the Caribbean Clipper. Again, this came in the same lot that I got that Black Seas Barracuda, and it was missing the top mast sail. Um, over here we have bins for all of my gold, and sand green and dark green in here. Some more individual storage parts. 
And then over here, this bank of towers has all the black and dark gray and dark bluish gray of, again, all the plates, bricks, specialty pieces and slopes. And up above here, I have the Black Knight's Castle. This is probably one of my favorite castles from the you know all the different Lego castle lines. I love the contrasting red and yellow with the black and you know light gray uh, main part of the castle, and then of course all the knights and their shields. I was disappointed when I got this that this knight here is missing. He's supposed to have white plumes on his helmet there, as well as this corner is supposed to be a, a large flag. And I, I believe it's uh, what would it be four by five type style flag. That's pretty much it for everything I have displayed. I have a few things down here. This is a Royal Knight's Castle, which has yet to be cleaned. Right now it is filthy, covered with dirt and grime. And then over here is one of the train sets, the uh, four five six one. I believe it's a passenger train back from the uh, er late nineties. Uh, it's back with the 9-volt track. So, and then this is all bins of tires, windows, and minifigures. This drawer here is specifically devoted to just minifigures of all various kinds. Star Wars, Ninjago, just regular city and space and things. I've got a lot of sorting out to do with those. So, that's going to just about do it. So that's my Lego room, as it stands right now at least. As I said, this is just temporary and I'd like to have a little bit better setup at some point. I'm curious to see what you guys all think and if you'd like, leave that in the comments below. But one thing I'm sure you're wondering is, as the tag on the description says, how did I get all this for $100? And I'm not going to spend a lot of time answering that, try to keep it short and sweet. Um, just because I know that it's this video is already running long, but the short answer is I didn't exactly get it all for a hundred dollars. Some of it was gifts like the Saturn V my wife bought for me last Christmas. I have taken you know Christmas money and birthday money and put it into Lego. But basically, the majority of this has come from about seven years ago. I took a hundred dollars of my own money. And I bought just a random bulk lot of Lego on eBay. And what I did was I sorted out through all the pieces, found the sets and pieces that I wanted to keep for my own collection, and then took the rest, whether it was minifigs or pieces or other sets that I didn't want, and I sold those back on eBay and was actually able to make more money than what I had originally invested. So then I've just been continually doing that, taking the money that I made from those profits, investing it back into more Lego, finding what I want, and selling back the rest, and that's just been continuing to to progress to where it's at the point where I am right now, including getting into the Bricklink store, which I've actually just recently started within the last year. It's a pretty small store, still only about 50 orders or so since I've started it. I'd like to grow it more, and I'm in the process of doing that, but that's, again, is the budget allows as I make money and the profits grow then continuing to be able to take some of those profits and invest them back into the Lego to continue to grow those stores and and things but that's basically been my process I've got you know some different techniques and tips and I'd like to share those in future videos with you but that's basically how it started a hundred dollar investment has just continued to grow and grow over the past seven years until you see what's behind me um, now again if you have questions about how I got this specific areas that you'd like my thoughts on, again, leave those in the comments below. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell so you won't miss any future videos. And remember, when for Legos on a budget, think budget bricks. God bless.